Hello, my name is Trudy Ray and I'm a trained virologist. I spend a lot of time thinking about viruses under normal circumstances, and I have spent even more time thinking about SARS-CoV-2 during this pandemic. Just in case you're wondering, SARS-CoV-2 is the name of the virus that causes the disease COVID-19. Those are two different things. There's the virus, the causative pathogen, and then there's the disease that it causes. I write for a blog called Virology Blog, and I believe I have authored about 10 different articles about SARS-CoV-2 during this pandemic. There is one article that I consider particularly important. I published this article on August 6th, and it is titled, How to End This Pandemic. The article is based on an op-ed in the New York Times and a guest appearance of Harvard epidemiologist, Michael Minna, on the podcast, this Week in Virology, also known as TWIV. If you've never listened to TWIV, you should. I have listened to it for about 10 years, over 650 episodes, and I have learned more about virology by listening to this podcast than I would have ever learned anywhere else. But back to my point, Michael Minna argues that the test that we use to diagnose SARS-CoV-2 infection is not really useful for making informed decisions in terms of quarantining the people who actually need to be quarantined. The test I'm talking about here is the QRT-PCR test, which stands for Quantitative Reverse Transcription Polymerase Chain Reaction. I know, it's a lot, but let me break it down for you. To carry out this test, a trained professional would start with a sample from a patient. This could be any of many different types of samples, like a mucus sample or a saliva sample. The first thing you have to do is inactivate the virus and extract the viral RNA. That's ribonucleic acid, the material that the viral genome is made of. The RNA is then converted to DNA by a process called reverse transcription, and the resulting DNA is then amplified during the polymerase chain reaction portion of the assay. For this amplification to occur, you need a small piece of DNA called a primer that binds to a complementary target sequence in viral DNA. So that primer binds here. Downstream of that primer, you need another piece of DNA, a probe, that also attaches to the target DNA. Once the primer binds to the DNA, an enzyme called polymerase starts copying the DNA in the direction of the probe. Once it reaches the probe, it cleaves it, and this activates a fluorescent marker that is attached to the probe. There are variations to this assay, but this is one way of doing it. By using this fluorescent probe, you can monitor the fluorescent signal in a quantitative manner in real time, rather than just detecting an accumulated end product. So this is why this assay is called quantitative reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. So to do this assay, you need a lab, you need a relatively expensive machine, you need reagents, you need a trained professional who knows how to do this assay. Oh, and you also need time. Often lots and lots of time. Not necessarily for the assay itself, which should only take a few hours, but you need time to send the sample in, process it, run the assay, interpret the results, get the results back to the patient. Time during which patients may not necessarily feel motivated enough to quarantine. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Well, there's a simpler way to do this. The answer is rapid testing. There are various different rapid tests in development, but one of them in particular can be done using what is known as a lateral flow device. It looks and works pretty much like a home pregnancy test. It's basically a strip of paper that has antibodies imprinted on it that recognize SARS-CoV-2 antigens. Antigens are immunogenic proteins on the surface of the virus. One example would be the spike protein. To take the test, you would simply spit into a cup and dip the sample pad portion of the strip into the saliva. The test should provide results in about 10 to 15 minutes at a cost of about $1 to $2 per test, and it does not require any additional equipment. Here's the way I envision that you would use these tests. You get up in the morning, you take the test, 
you put the strip on your bathroom vanity and you hop into the shower. By the time you get out of the shower, you should know whether or not you're positive. If you're positive, you stay home and you quarantine. You call your doctor and then you confirm your home results with a PCR test. Now you may ask, is the test sensitive enough? And the answer is that it's not quite as sensitive as a PCR test, but that reduced sensitivity is not random. Let me explain. PCR tests are so sensitive that they can detect viral RNA for weeks and months, but this RNA doesn't always represent infectious transmissible virus. People who are infected with SARS-CoV-2 usually replicate lots of virus early on during the first days of infection. Those virus levels peak, and then as the immune system kicks in, they begin to decline. One important point I want to make is that with this virus, symptoms don't usually appear until after that peak has already occurred. And because most people don't get tested until after they have symptoms, they are likely already on this downward slope of viral replication and no longer infectious at the time of testing. However, in the meantime, they have been unknowingly transmitting the virus to others for several days. So clearly, these people need to be identified and isolated during their period of high infectivity. The good news is that although the lateral flow tests are not as sensitive as PCR tests, that sensitivity is limited to this window of high viral replication, which happens to also be the actual window of transmissibility. So if you do this test every day and you get your results immediately, you're more likely to find out that you're infected during the time that actually matters. So you can stay home, isolate and prevent transmission to others. This would also alleviate the need for costly contact tracing measures because most infected people would know they would be aware of their status and they would stay isolated during their period of high transmission. On the other hand, highly sensitive PCR tests that continue to detect viral RNA for weeks after a patient is no longer infectious are irrelevant for isolation purposes and they do nothing to curb transmission. So where can you get these tests? Rapid lateral flow tests for SARS-CoV-2 already exist, but some people are concerned about their low sensitivity compared to PCR tests. However, hopefully the FDA, CDC, and NIH will recognize the value of these tests as a screening measure and make them widely available to the public. And hopefully they will be affordable at the $1 to $2 per test price range. This may be a great solution for keeping schools and workplaces open safely and for rebuilding the economy, at least until the new vaccines are widely available. Thank you for listening.